Hello students, in this video we are going to study the histology of kidney and uh, it is the section 57 of histology unit. Now what are kidneys? So kidneys are one pair of organs which are found in the abdominal cavity and uh, they are associated with excretion. So kidneys are the organs where urine is produced. So the blood is filtered and the nitrogenous wastes are removed in the form of urine and that urine is produced in the kidney. So in this way kidney are uh, very important organs of excretory system. Now along with the excretion of urine they also maintain uh, water balance in the body. So whenever there is excess of water that is removed through the urine. So in this way we can say kidney is also associated with osmoregulation in the body. Now histologically uh, when we take the longitudinal section of kidney uh, it shows three parts. So they are capsule, cortex and medulla. Now capsule it is the outermost uh, covering and it is made up of fibrous tissue surrounding the kidney. So like almost all other organs of our body, kidney is also covered by a fibrous capsule and it is mainly protective in function. And uh, the next layer uh, which is actually the functional part of the kidney, it is called cortex. And then the inner layer is going to be called medulla. Actually speaking, kidney is made up of capsule, uh, uh, I mean cortex and medulla, whereas the capsule is the protective part. So the functional part of the kidney is made up of cortex and medulla. Now cortex uh, is a reddish brown layer of tissue immediately found below the capsule and it consists of renal corpuscles and convoluted tubules of the nephrons. This uh, is the diagram showing the longitudinal section of kidney. As we already mentioned, it shows three parts of the kidney. So the outermost layer is renal capsule and below that we find renal cortex and uh, then below the renal cortex the area is called renal medulla. Now the outermost layer renal capsule is a very thin fibrous layer and it's mainly protective in function whereas the cortex and medulla parts consist of connective tissue and nephrons. The medulla part you can see in the picture is actually arranged in the form of uh, renal pyramids. So the cortex part actually extends between the renal pyramids. In this way the medulla uh, shows many uh, pyramidal structures. So that's about uh, the longitudinal section showing the renal capsule, cortex and medulla. And you can see a large duct originating from each kidney which is called ureter. So the urine which is produced in nephrons is ultimately collected in this ureter and it will reach uh, the urinary bladder. So medulla part is the innermost layer and it consists of renal pyramids as we already mentioned and uh, there are 8 to 18 renal pyramids in each kidney and apex of each pyramid is called renal papilla and each papilla projects into a small depression called minor calyx and uh, plural word is calysis. So here again we can see the same diagram to understand this structure. So this uh, apex part is called renal papilla, renal papillae and these renal papillae are going to join to form minor calysis and these minor calysis unite to form a major calyx and then the major calysis join to form a funnel shaped structure called renal 
pelvis and the renal pelvis collects the urine and it leads to ureter so as i already mentioned ureter will enter into the urinary bladder so the papillae minor calyces major calyces renal pelvis and ureter form the passage for the urine which is produced in the nephrons so here you can see the renal papillae structurally and functionally each kidney is made up of a very large number of units called nephrons or uriniferous tubules probably you have studied this uh, structure while studying the physiology of urine formation so a nephron here this is a diagram showing one nephron so each nephron is made up of parts called bowman's capsule proximal convoluted tubule a very thin and uh, coiled tubule tube like structure so this is proximal convoluted tubule and then it forms a very long loop like structure called loop of henle or henle's loop and then loop of henle uh, forms the continuous form called distal convoluted tubule and distal convoluted tubule ultimately joins the collecting duct now this nephron is surrounded by blood vessels you can see the bowman's capsule is going to receive the blood vessels through the afferent blood vessel or afferent arteriole and the blood that enters into the bowman's capsule will come out in the form of efferent arteriole and the loop of henle is also surrounded by the blood vessels now this is a structural unit and also the functional unit the urine is produced in each and every nephrons and uh, we can identify two kinds of nephrons in kidneys they are cortical and juxta medullary now what is the difference between cortical and juxta medullary nephrons so the difference mainly lies with the length of loop of henle here in this diagram you can clearly see the nephrons bowman's capsule proximal convoluted tubule and distal convoluted tubule lays in the cortex part of the kidney whereas the loop of henle is found in the medulla part of the kidney so these are the two types of nephrons we can observe in the kidney so this is the nephron with very long loop of henle extending into the medulla part therefore it is called juxta medullary nephron whereas this nephron is having a very short loop of henle in the medulla part and it is called cortical nephron because most of the part of this nephron lies in the cortical part itself cortex part of the kidney itself now what is the physiological significance of these two nephrons the loop of henle is mainly associated with reabsorption of water so bowman's capsule is the part where primary urine is produced and uh, it is very dilute it mainly consists of water and then in that water you find the nitrogenous waste and also some useful materials and the filtered material filtered uh, urine which is formed in the bowman's capsule is called primary urine and when when this primary urine passes through the proximal convoluted tubule the useful molecules like nutrient molecules like glucose fatty acids amino acids etc are reabsorbed into the blood vessels through the proximal convoluted tubule and also the water but most of the water almost 96% of water is reabsorbed into the blood vessels from the loop of henle now longer the loop of henle more water will be reabsorbed from the urine 
So smaller or shorter the loop of inlay, less amount of water will be reabsorbed. Be very simple. The urine which is produced in juxta medullary nephron will be concentrated urine and the urine which is going to be produced in the cortical nephron is going to be a very dilute urine. So the urine is normally concentrated during summer days because we lose lot of water through the sweat and other forms. So normally the water content is already less. So the body cannot lose water through the urine. Therefore, it produces concentrated urine during the summer or hot climatic conditions. Whereas in the winter, when we do not lose water through the sweating, the body is going to remove that excess water through the urine only. In that case, it is going to use cortical nephrons. So in the summer, body is going to use mostly the juxta medullary nephrons and in the winter, it is, more, it is mainly going to use cortical nephrons. So that is the physiological significance of these two types of kidneys, uh, these two types of nephrons. The cortex part of the kidney uh, forms the outermost layer and uh, the cortex has a grainy appearance as it mostly contains ovoid and coiled parts of the nephrons. So they are nothing but renal corpuscles and also the convoluted tubules like proximal and distal convoluted tubules. So when we take the transverse section of the cortical region of the kidney, we mainly find renal corpuscles and renal tubules like proximal convoluted tubule and distal convoluted tubule. So this is the uh, this is the uh, transverse section of kidney as seen under microscope. You can see these structures which are renal corpuscles. Now what are renal corpuscles? These are nothing but the Bowman's capsules and we know that Bo uh, inside the Bowman capsule we find the capillary network of the blood vessel. So that appears in the section like this and we call it as renal corpuscle. So these are the renal corpuscle. So you can assume that one renal corpuscle represents one nephron. And uh, here these are the ducts. So they may be proximal convoluted tubules or distal convoluted tubules. Now even we can differentiate proximal and distal convoluted tubule if the section is very good based on the type of epithelial cells that border the tubule. Now this is how you can expect the transverse section of the kidney uh, under the microscope. Now this is the enlarged portion showing the renal corpuscles and uh, this one is the proximal tubule and this one is the distal tubule. So basically the cortex part of the kidney shows renal corpuscles and the tubules, the proximal tubule and distal tubules. Renal corpuscle uh, which is found uh, in the cortex part of the kidney is part of the Bowman's capsule. I mean it is a structure which is found inside the Bowman capsule. So the renal corpuscle is the filtration apparatus of the nephron. It consists of two layers, parietal and visceral layer, which bound a cavity called glomerular capsular space or Bowman's urinary space. Now you can see here the corpuscle showing two layers, parietal and visceral, right? And what uh, we have to remember one of the very important cell we find is podocytes. So these are the podocytes which form the outer layer of this renal corpuscle. And uh, the blood vessels which are present here from this, from this structure which contains blood, 
the filtration the filtration process occurs and uh, blood is literally filtered and that is going to be converted into urine during the filtration process in the beginning both the waste materials and useful materials are filtered but in the next part of the nephron the useful materials are reabsorbed and only urine is going to be removed out of the body now the inner visceral layer is made up of spherical cells called podocytes so as i already mentioned inner visceral layer is made up of podocytes so remember this special type of cells podocytes of which are found in this corpuscle part now podocytes cover the walls of the glomerular capillaries the outer parietal layer so this is the outer parietal layer and it is made up of simple squamous epithelium and uh, this simple squamous epithelium continues with the nephron tubules now this one you can see the section showing proximal convoluted tubule and uh, proximal convoluted tubule is made up of special type of cells called brush border cells so in higher magnification we can see the brush border cells and coming to the innermost part of the kidney that is medulla part so there is a spelling problem here so renal medulla it appears striped because it contains only the tubule parts i mean the loop of henle part whereas tubule part and uh, corpuscle part are found in the cortex region and in the longitudinal session uh, section we already seen that it, it is mainly made up of pyramid like structures so in this diagram you can see this is a sectional view of renal medulla showing the nephron structures that is tubules loop of henle and collecting ducts are mainly found in this portion and uh, of course we find the connective tissue between these tubules and blood vessels as i already told you each loop of henle is uh, surrounded by blood vessels so that can also be seen in the sectional view now that's about the histology of kidney the kidney internal structure of kidney or the histological detail of kidney shows the outermost layer that is capsule and then we find the cortex and then medulla so cortex part is mainly made up of renal corpuscles and ducts that is proximal convoluted duct and distal convoluted duct parts whereas the medulla part mainly shows the loop of henle part so that's what we see in the sectional views or the histological structure of the kidney so that's about the histology of kidney i hope the session was useful thank you